Good morning, everyone. My name is Bernd Kulig. I'm from Microsoft Services Germany, from Microsoft Consulting Services <laughs> Germany, working as an architect for Windows Azure based solutions. And I'm very excited to be here today to introduce you to a project that we did with iQuest during this year that is called Eye on Earth. I split the agenda in two parts. First, I will give an overview of the project, um, showing you a little bit of background for Eye on Earth, then requirements in the project setup. In the second part, we will jump into technology. I will show you the high-level architecture of the solution, and then we will go a little bit deeper into Bing Maps layers, especially into tile layers, and how they can be generated in the Windows Azure Cloud. So, what is Eye on Earth? It's a five-year partnership between the European Environment Agency and Microsoft with the goal to bring environmental information to citizens and governments across Europe, and also to act as a two-way communication platform where citizens also has the capability to report back on their own environment. To make yourself a little bit familiar with what the agency is doing and the history of Eye on Earth, I would first like to show you a short video. The European Environment Agency was established in 1990 by EU regulation because we found out that it doesn't stop at the border. So there was a clear demand for a more coherent approach to environmental. The European Environment Agency is actually based in Copenhagen. When it was founded, it was very much an agency designed to collect information and put that back out to the public. As time has gone on, we've become much more aware that policies have a tremendous effect and so politicians and citizens have asked us to look in more depth to really see if what's been put in place is working. We report, of course, on air quality, quality, biodiversity, the whole range of environmental issues. But more and more, we've had to extend our work towards the sectors, agriculture, energy, transport, because these are the places which are having the biggest effect on the environment itself. Recently, we've been developing new kinds of projects to actually encourage more data gathering by citizens. So we get more of a flavor from not just simply looking at Europe, but coming right down to people's neighborhoods. Airwatch and Waterwatch are the first projects within a vision called Eye on Earth, which is about a global observatory of environmental change. Eye on Earth is a platform that allows people to find data in their own surroundings so they can find water information, air information, and in the future they will find biodiversity information. Microsoft helps us to communicate in a two-way uh, communication form with this platform because it allows people to feed us back information on their own environment. With AirWatch, we can for the first time make use of the European Air Quality Index. We receive from the work of scientists which are basically modeling the development of air quality in Europe. The information in Ion Earth is based on monitoring stations. In the area of basing water, we have around 22,000 monitoring stations. On air, there are a good 1,000 stations from 35 uh, different data providers. In summer, we saw a lot of traffic coming up, and that is something not really dear to in this organization. We chose to go for Windows Azure because it offers us much more flexibility than any of the other technical solutions which are available. So AirWatch being built on a scalable platform like Azure helps us to cope with those peaks in summer seasons. The application is being built using all the European languages, so we have more than 20 languages we can provide for the user interface. We use the Azure simply because of scalability reasons and SQL Azure. We're using Bing Maps and we're using Silverlight 3. We also developed an ASP.NET version which guarantees the interoperability for the whole system. Through the usage of the Azure technology we have access to cloud computing which has a couple of advantages for us. 
One advantage being to be more flexible regarding the amount of users. Another advantage is that we do not have to provide ourselves the whole IT environment for the application. Climate change is affecting us all. Uh, we can only adapt to climate change if we know the facts. Our goal is to provide people with the data so they can make the decisions themselves. One of the special projects under the Iron Earth vision is the Atlas of Environmental Change, where we actively go out and speak with people who are either suffering from climate change or have solutions to climate change. All across Europe, there are communities who are responding to the challenge in an incredibly positive way. And so this is a very novel idea where we bring those satellite images right down into the sort of local and tell the story of what's happening on the ground against this backdrop of the changing face of Europe with climate change. And so this atlas, I think for the first time, will be personal witnesses all the way through to how you can see it from space. So I think it's genuinely a unique style of telling the story of what's happening to Europe. We speak with reindeer herders in Lapland and ask them how they exchange and what it means for them. We speak with people in the Netherlands that have built houses that can actually float up and down again depending on the water level. So I think a little bit of courage and bravery is what we've been given by working with Microsoft and I think it's placed the European Environment Agency really at the cutting edge of what it means to be a public service marking out where the world is going in a time of climate change. Okay. Thanks. To the presentation. The recording of the video that you just saw was made when Ion Earth version 2 was launched in December 2009. You can reach the application at www.ionearth.eu. It contains information about water quality, which is called Airwatch, uh, wa sorry, Waterwatch, and information about air quality. Um, this is Airwatch. Our project that we did is the next version of Ion Earth. It's Ion Earth V3. And the EEA, the European Environment Agency, like to add more indicators than air and water. For instance, they want to add noise watch, showing noise levels of different cities and urban areas around Europe for noise like air traffic or railroad, uh, things like that. For reporting back noise levels, they conceived um, a Windows Phone app that is called Human Sensor that allows you to record a noise with your smartphone and then measure the, as effectively the decibel level there and then upload it to Ion Earth. This is just an example of crowdsourcing, um, utilizing the public to gather information about the environment and to upload it to Windows Azure. And this is just possible with this massive uh, data with a cloud platform like, like Windows Azure. Another example is Nature Watch, which deals with biodiversity. So biodiversity effectively is um, which populations are living in a certain habitat, for instance. An important thing here are so-called invasive alien species. So these are species which you found which are not in their natural habitat. I mean, an, an example here could be some shells or mussels at the Black Sea coast that are usually not there when you're just being there. And this can also be then uploaded to the EA via Iron Earth. And they are very interested in these kind of informations because these are signs of climate change. And I want to add much more indicators like land watch, so showing how the land is used, and on and on. Um, unfortunately, the Ion Earth V2 application was built bespoke for AirWatch and WaterWatch, and it was difficult to add new indicators easily. So we had to re-architect the whole system from ground up in the front end and in the back end to make it easy to add new indicators. Another goal of the version 3 project was to put some of the more interesting data onto Windows Azure 
marketplace data market. For instance, the water quality information is quite interesting. Um, imagine you're having travel sites that are selling trips to, to beaches and you can um, show the official EA rating of the water quality next to this next to this beach. So then you can utilize the Windows Azure data market to, to get to this information and to use it in your own applications. Then we already have in V2 um, Windows Phone 7 application. We want to extend this also to other mobile platforms like the one you see on the slide. Um, as we have heard in the video, there were two versions of the UI, one with Silverlight 3 and the other one with HTML. Um, because of maintenance, to save some maintenance costs, we decided to go for just one UI in the future that is built uh, on HTML5, giving you a similar user experience uh, as uh, Silverlight, and in parallel gives you a broad interoperability uh, between um, lots of browsers. And of course, there were lots more requirements. We had a very international team working on this European project. First of all, the EEA in Copenhagen, responsible for collecting and aggregating and publicating the, the data. Then iQuest in Cluj did the, the entire Windows Azure backend implementation. T-Systems in Dresden, Germany did the or is working on the HTML5 front-end and also on the uh, smartphone apps. Me and a colleague of mine from Microsoft Ge Germany did the entire end-to-end -end architecture of the system. We worked very closely with, with iQuest in Cluj and also with the, with the front-end team in Dresden. And finally, we had excellent support from the Microsoft Corporation in Redmond from the Secret Azure product group, which also owns the data market because we participated in a technology adoption program, so we always get very early information and um, have someone to speak to if there were any technical road blockers ahead. How does such a distributed team work effectively together? That's always a challenge, I think. The, the size of the team, I would call it a, a mid-sized project with around 20 project members and 10 developers. Um, the main development was done in Cluj and Dresden. The whole back-end de development um, needed to be done in four months. And if you remember that we need to, to um, build this from scratch, uh, totally new, that was a very uh, tough timeline we had to, 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 to make. We used the Scrum methodology. I think this is a, a standard for, for iQuest. Um, did daily scrum calls with tools like Office Communicator and, and instant messaging. This, this helps a lot in, in communicating over these uh, long distances. And of course, we had um, a shared team foundation server where all the teams contributed to that is accessible over the internet via <coughs> VPN connection. And we had everything, all the builds, um, totally automated and also automated deployments. So everything that was checked in was in Azure 24 hours later, and, and that was um, quite important. Uh, we worked with three Azure subscriptions, the, as I just said, the daily environment with the newest code, then with a more stable test environment and the production environment. That's also something that you can do in Azure very nicely. You can uh, turn on and off different environments very easily for testing purposes and things like that. And you always have the guarantee that these environments are identical, which is sometimes hard to do on-premise. Okay, now maybe to the more interesting side, the, the technology. From a high-level solution architecture point of view, uh, we're having here three areas. On the bottom, the EA data center in Copenhagen. This is really on-premise. Then we have the cloud in the middle and the clients on the top. So the EEA is collecting data from all over Europe through, through FTP uploads or sent by paper or the different ways how they, they get to this data. In the end, they're using a BizTalk server to, um, to <coughs> transform the data and to, to store it in the end in a SQL server uh, database. 
the data sets that are relevant for Ion Earth are then uploaded to Microsoft SQL Azure with the tools like SQL Server Integration Services, for instance. Some of the data is uploaded each hour, so it needs an automatic process. For instance, the air quality, you're not interested in the air quality um, in the past, but you want to see the air quality nearly real time. And other information is just uploaded occasionally, like for instance, um, water quality is only measured a few times a year. So very different upload mechanisms there. Then this data is published um, as private data services with the OData protocol. Um, OData is a REST-based protocol built on open standards that uses AtomPub and uh, JSON, for instance. <coughs> And it's the kind of standard protocol that we use in the, in the application. Um, we have the private data services hosted in Azure Web Role. We also have the public data services, which are really um, put into the Windows Azure Marketplace catalog so that it can be uh, discovered there from, from other applications. Then we're having an Azure Worker Role with the tile generation engine. More on that later. And we're having the Ion Earth portal, of course, hosting the HTML5 client that is built with the new Bing Maps control. We have the mobile clients. And, of course, you have the information worker tools like Microsoft Excel, Power Pivot, and so on, which all come now with OData support and make it really easy to consume the data from the marketplace and to, to also include it in, in your own applications. Unfortunately, uh, T-Systems is still working on the UI side, so I can, cannot show you a demo today of the new version. However, I, I have uh, here um, a screenshot that shows you the, the new uh, look and feel. In the center, you see the, the Bing Maps HXv7 control, as, as you know it, I think. Then we have on the bottom the watch and layer chooser. More on this on the next slide. We have the legend that tells us what is currently shown on the web, on the, on the map. Then you can search, of course, for different locations. Then the maps moves into this location. And then you see for the current location this flying panel on the right uh, that shows you how, it, how good is the air quality, how good is the, the next water um, at, for that place. And, and also, you're also seeing noise watch here. And you can imagine this will be extended. You can also click somewhere on, on a station and then you're getting more detailed information. So that's how the application is going, going to look like. If, if we look at the watch and layer chooser, here we can switch between the different watches. For instance, with AirWatch. And each watch has a number of layers. <coughs> like here are three for AirWatch. First, the, the air station layers. These are the stations of the EEA that measures the air quality. Then we have the user feedback layers. So here you see what the, the public reported about their quality. And we have an air quality model layer that is a more scientific um, air quality index. And you can turn on and off these different layers on the map. And then you're seeing different colors and points showing you the quality. Right. So let's get a little bit deeper into these layers of, of Bing Maps. Um, standard layers, which are called features layers, you just upload the data to the, to the control. And these data are using usually um, push pins or points that you may be familiar with if you're going to, to Bing Maps or to Google Maps and you, you're showing some points of interest, you get these, you get these uh, push pins on the map and, and same here. Um, you can also show polylines or polygons for instance, if you want to visualize the border of a country or something like that, then it gets a little bit more uh, uh, tricky. Here you see th this conceptual layer on top of the Bing base map, where this polygon is drawn on a transparent layer, so that uh, if, if you look at it then, it's, it's just like the polygon is, is directly on the base map. And the data is loaded from the OData services with jQuery and then using JavaScript to add these layers to the Bing Maps control. This is a very short example where you're having four points 
and you add these points to an entity collection, this is the layer, and then you add the layer to the map, and then you can turn the layer on and off. So uh, you, nearly the whole front end is written in JavaScript, right? So there's not much ASP or netcode there. However, there is a problem. When the number of points gets too big, I would say a few thousand, then it takes a while to transfer this data to the client, and even worse, you cannot, you cannot visualize it, because if you add a few thousand points to, to, uh, to the Bing Maps control, it will get incredibly slow and it freeze, basically. And that's not a problem of the Bing Maps control, that's basically uh, a limitation of, the, of, of, of how much uh, such a machine can handle. I mean, even with Silverlight, it's not possible to, to show uh, such a huge amount of points that we have, for instance, in WaterWatch with over 22,000. So what can you do instead to, to show all these points? Well, uh, you can use the standard mechanism that uh, Bing Maps is using also for its base map. And, and this is, <coughs> they have a number of, of so-called base maps, which are road, aerial, hybrid. I think most of you uh, know them. And how is this working? Bing Maps divides each map into a set of 256 times 256 pixel tiles. So if you zoom out and see the entire world, you're having four pictures, four PNG files, loaded into the browser. If you zoom in one level, each of these get into another four pictures, right? So you're having 16 on the next level. And on the third level, you already have 2516. And uh, the deeper you zoom, of course, the more pictures, the more tiles you need. To, uh, to display the data. And the, the, the trick here is to, to create these, these um, pictures on the server side and then let the Bing control pull these pictures to visualize the data. And you can use this to create your own custom tile layers and overlay the Bing base map, and that is what we did. Here is an example. On the left hand side, you see the Bing area base map somewhere at the bottom of Italy. And on the right hand side, we, you see a custom tile that we render for Ion Earth. And then, <coughs> if you overlay the two, you see the, the water stations on the, on the coasts of, of Italy, right? So that's, that's then how it looks like in, in Ion Earth. And of course, we need, to <coughs> we need to render all these images. And, and this is really compute intensive. And, takes a long time, and to the end I want to quickly show you how we do this in, in Windows Azure. So we have the water data on premise, and the EA uploads it to SQL Azure. Then they trigger um, a web service that does the layer generation. And this web service then looks at the data and creates so-called rendering tasks. So for each tile it creates the tasks. So you're having tens of thousands of tasks inside of this queue. Each one uh, meant to, to render one picture of this whole tile layer. And then you have an Azure Worker role here with two instances. And, and these Azure Worker roles are pulling for work in the queue. And then they start rendering the thing. Of course, if you if you're having peaks here, um, the water is only updated a few times a year. What you can do with Azure, you can scale up the number of worker roles during this time and then do the rendering with, with a huge number of worker roles. And if you're done with it, then you shut down and save some costs. So this is also something that you can only do with, with Windows Azure. When the <clears throat> images were rendered, then they are stored in Windows Azure Blob Storage and make publicly available through an ASP.NET handler. Finally, we also use Azure Content Delivery Network, which gives you a better performance for accessing these tiles by, by storing the images basically on, on the edge networks. So as you can see here, we're leveraging the whole, nearly the whole platform. We have, we're using worker roles, web roles, all the Azure storage stuff, uh, SQL Azure, uh, CDN, and I think uh, doing something like this uh, formally on-premise was very difficult to do. And, and with, with the 
with the Azure platform, it really become more mainstream, and, and I think you can do this. Conclusion. So IONERS is a cloud-based project that displays environmental inf information and allow to give feedback on the environment. <coughs> the new backend for Ion Earth, Ion Earth V3 has been successfully delivered by iQuest in a very short time frame. We, we are ready with it. The user interface is still under development and watch out for the new release which is coming uh, in the next months. Maybe till end of the year, we'll see. Some technology takeaways. The Bing Maps HXv7 control is already using HTML5. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. So if, for instance, it has an animated zoom similar to Silverlight. And the, the, the cleverness of the controls is it, it, it detects the underlying browser. And if it's not HTML5 browser, for instance, if it's IE8 or IE7, then it just omits some nice animations, but it still works. So you can use it in, uh, in situations where you're having HTML5, but not all browsers today are HTML5 capable, but they would still work with HTML4. Then if the number of points on the map gets too big, consider using a tile layer. And if you need a tile layer, then you can very well create it in the Windows Azure Cloud. Finally, we're seeing more and more governments and companies put their data on data market, uh, creating interesting opportunities for, for developers worldwide to subscribe to this data and to use this data in their own external applications, creating fascinating mashups where you can combine certain datas that were never combined before. And I think this uh, often proclaimed programmable web is slowly becoming a reality. Thank you very much.